All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome everybody to today's UPA Live. Uh, I'm Nate Edwards. I'll be hosting today. Jaron's at football practice right now. And today is super exciting. Three-time National Photographer of the Year, Stephen Bridges, is going to be giving us his, I don't even remember the official title, super awesome, efficient headshot mm -hmm. workflow system that will change your life. And so without any further ado, Stephen, we're going to turn the time over to you, and uh, we're excited to learn. If you guys have any questions, I, I should have asked this before. Stephen, do you want them just to chime in? Do you want to go in the chat, and then I can kind of facilitate that? What would you prefer? But let's have them go in the chat, and you facilitate it. Um, I'll probably have breaks, but that'll just make sure I don't get railroaded, because that's real easy for me to do. Great. So yeah, if you guys have uh, questions, again, just put them in the chat and then we'll uh, go from there. So Stephen, go ahead. All right. Uh, thank you everybody for showing up. Um, I know it's time out of your day and I appreciate it. Uh, I will say one thing, this is about my headshot workflow. It is not about how to shoot like Peter Hurley or all the different styles of headshots to shoot. This is the fun and exciting stuff about the back end. Uh, what I do to make it faster in the long run so it can give me more time to go out and find features and be creative on uh, other assignments. So with that, I'm going to try to share my screen and start my presentation. There we go. I'm going to share that one. Share here. All right, so time is money and the more time <laughs> that you have, you can do stuff, not only make money, but make more fun pictures than just being in the studio with headshots or sitting behind the computer doing the metadata. Um, this system is a, uh, this, it is a um, very, it became a part because of UPAA and the networking from there. It, it's all made up from networking. I'm not a genius. I don't know everything there is to know. In fact, I know just enough to get by. But in 2019, I was talking to uh, Matt Stamey at the Grand Valley Symposium. We were talking about photo mechanic and code replacements and variables. And he was teaching me about that stuff. And then I came home we started applying it and I went and talked to our athletic photographer, Andrew, who used to be a member. And he was like, Hey, I bet that would go great with my spreadsheet. So I took a spreadsheet and used it to apply metadata throughout my photos and make my system from where at the time I was spending about four to six hours processing headshots. By the time I was trying to read people's names that wrote on a piece of paper, I didn't know the difference between an I and E or an O or an A. And I took that and now I can process headshots in 15 minutes. <clears throat> so I've saved myself over half a day by using this process. Uh, it's something that I hope I can share with you. Uh, I know other members have sort of started implementing it. Uh, the thing may not work in a whole for what you need, but if you can take part of it and apply it to what you do, that's, that's what we're all about. So as we start, I'm going to throw this up on the screen. Uh, I can You can take down the note or you can uh, scan that. This is a Google Drive link that has files in here that go along with this presentation. It's a spreadsheet I'm going to talk about. There's uh, XMP files and other things that you can use along with the slides from this presentation in case you want to go back over it or come back to the UPA Live. So I'll leave that up for just a second. All right. So why is my spreadsheet important? First thing I said, people were writing down their names and I couldn't tell the difference between what letters and what department and everything else. This at least lets people type their name in so that I don't have to worry about their penmanship. And it has all the departments, the columns that I need to fill in within uh, what I want in my metadata later. But what happens is they everyone signs in on the first page. And on the second page, the spreadsheet makes um, the it, it prepares the information to be able to put into a code replacement file. 
that photo mechanic can see and import into uh, all the metadata for all of your photos. If you'll look there on the right side of the screen, we'll have A1, A2, then we'll have the person's name, their email, their uh, department, and then their first and last name all separated out. All of those are different columns that later that photo mechanic pulls from to add into the metadata. Pre-production. What I do is I have a folder. Uh, I have different folders by years, and within those, I have different days. So I keep every day's headshots that I do. And <clears throat> before I start a new shoot, I'll go to one of the previous day's headshots. I'll tell it to make a copy. I'll rename it for that date that I'm doing. And then I will open it up and delete out the old information. And it's ready to go for people to come and sign in and start with the next shoot. Uh, and again, that keeps a running total. So if I ever have to go back for some reason, I wonder what happened on one day, I can still have a list of everybody that was in. When it comes time for uh, headshots, I have them come in. Simple, they sign into the spreadsheet. We take headshots, we do a few different angles, do left, right, and center. Um, then I bring them over to monitor. Uh, I hook my camera up to an old computer screen through an HDMI cord. It shows the, the picture bigger than what's on the back of the camera, but still not as big as a 27 inch monitor because nobody needs to see their headshot life size. Um, I tell them that we're going to look through them. It's like, hey, we're going to look through here, find your favorite one. We'll narrow it down um, because we can only keep one headshot. If I keep more than one headshot per person, my hard drives will blow up by the end of the year because that's just the volume that it will keep. And in reality is all you're going to use is one anyway. So, uh, and I've, I'm normally every once in a while gets a little bit of, of question about it, but most people agree and uh, we'll go through and look at them and, and pick something out. So, and then when they pick it, then we're done. Uh, but I will say a part of this, this spreadsheet that I was talking about, everything is sequential. So if for some reason a person just like, hey, I need one with my glasses on and with them off, or I need a tie and a tie off, um, I'll say, okay, we'll give you two. But when I do that, I need to go back and make an extra entry below the original person so or, uh, their name, so that way they show that they have two pictures so that the spreadsheet can keep everything in line. Hey, Stephen, while you're transitioning there, I, I have a question personally. Is, okay. there, is there a pro to having your spreadsheet split up by day as opposed to doing it either by month or just by year and having the date be part of that? I have the date in the file name. And that way, because I I want to know that day and what's on that shoot. And everybody, again, this is a, it makes a code replacement in sequential order. So I don't want to mix anybody else from another shoot in on that with anybody else, if I'm understanding you correctly. Okay. I, I just do it by the day, by per shoot, I guess I should say. And I put the date in the, in the file name. Okay. I have great. a question now. Uh... So sorry. Um, no. In the event that you have duplicate names, um, how do you handle that? Uh, what I do is I try and find out if somebody has a middle name or a middle initial. How do you take care of duplicate names? You could, um, you can put it, you can have them put like after their first name, go ahead and put their middle name also in that same block. I mean, it, it'd, be, it'd be the same thing if somebody had a hyphenated name. And it will it will still pull and put that information where it needs to be. Uh, and also, again, I put department in there just in case. Hey, what about when this person worked with research, but now they're over here with the math department, or they've moved to the vice chancellor's office? So you could go back and look for that person's name in your damn system, and put their name plus what department they were in or at that time. That I sort of use that as an identifier, so that can also help with duplicate names. But I, you won't have to do anything with writing. This spreadsheet will pull the stuff in, and you'll see that here later on. It pulls all the information in. All you have to do is hit a button, and bam, it populates a, and fills everything in. So, and how you do that? So after I do, after I take the pictures, 
Uh, I have one line for every, uh, oh, so when I'm reviewing the pictures for the people, I go through and I tag them on the back of the camera, which, or I tag them in the camera. I used to use stars, but with photo mechanic, they do not use stars because that's something Canon does. And um, not every camera, camera manufacturer does. So they will, um, they will identify tags or lock, lock the button. So whenever somebody says, that's the picture I want, I lock it right there in front of them. They see it on the screen. We know that's one they've chosen. After I'm done with my headshot session, I'll go back to my office from the studio. I'll go to the back end of the, the spreadsheet. I'll go to page two. And right over, you'll see on the right, there's a column A, and then they have everybody's information, which I mentioned earlier. I'll copy all of that information. Don't worry about the stuff on the left. You only need columns F through whatever the bottom of L is. And then I'll take it over and I will paste it into a, um, a plain text file, which is something that that's plain text files is what photo mechanic has to have to be able to read. Um, I, the plain text file is in my download and I'll show that link later so that you can have that. I personally um, keep a folder on my computer that is nothing but code replacements, and I have a little uh, quick access to it on the left side of my screen. And uh, so all I can do is just go in there and I can quickly open up the file, and then I'll paste everybody's information in there and close it. And when you close it, it saves it. And all of this stuff is very simple. It'll move really quick. And I'll show that to you here in a minute. It's explaining it takes a lot longer than it does to do it. So after you put your information into the code replacement document, you then need to tell Photo Mechanic that, hey, that's there. So you go into Photo Mechanic, you'll go up to edit, scroll all the way down and go to set code replacements. And then you'll go over, they'll pop up another window where you'll click add. You'll go find wherever you have that file is. I recommend that wherever you put it is a place that you keep it. So you continually go back to it. Even once you do this, you can just go back and hit, uh, there's a refresh button on the previous page. You can just go hit reload code replacements and you don't have to do the set and it, it will just automatically reload it. One major thing about this, uh, how my setup is, is my delimiter. I have my delimiter set for a backslash and it's down here at the bottom. Whenever you set your code replacements, you need to use this so that the rest of the spreadsheet will work. So once you've, you've taken your headshots, you've taken the, the spreadsheet, you've extract, you've taken the information off, put it in a text file, you've, Told photo mechanics there, you're good to go now. So what you need to do is ingest the uh, ingest your card. You put your card in the camera, uh, bring up the ingest file. If it doesn't automatically, you can do that with Command G. And at this point, here's a whole bunch of information. It feels like that has to be put in. It's something that you do once and it's there uh, and you can save it. So it's not a big deal. But And I'm going to quickly go over it and uh, then we will, I said, have a quicker way to do it for later. But it, the one thing you wanna do is you wanna keep your source, after you select your card, keep source structure in the same destination, put everything into a, a folder name, and I have it so that it creates a folder and all of this right here is code that's going across in my folder name. It makes a two digit year with a two digit month and a two digit day with uh, periods in between, a dash, studio headshots. And then within that folder, I have one that says raw studio headshots for the day. So that is the photo structure that I like. You can use that. You don't have to, you can make it say whatever you want it to. Uh, then <clears throat> up at the top right of the screen, you have your primary destination. You can pick your desktop. I have a special hard drive where all my stuff is archived and that's where I automatically send it to. I told you earlier, we need to lock the photos. Here in the filter files, you can tell it to only copy the locked folders, or the locked photos. So that you can shoot a hundred headshots and lock five different people and it will only pull those five. So you're not just killing your hard drive, constantly putting images on and off that you're never gonna use. 
Um, after uh, <clears throat> With this, we also need to apply the metadata, which is what I talked about earlier. And right here, you'll hit apply the metadata to the photos, and then you'll click this little button below it that the, brings up the metadata template. Here, here's all sort of the secret. I told you it has the different columns. It explains what's what. Here in the description, it has sequence A, or the first A and then the sequence, which is one, and that is the person's full name. And then it will go with, and where it says A and sequence column three, that is their department. That's where I had them fill out their department. And then six is whether they're faculty or staff. And it says taken in the studio own and then it pulls the camera's uh date right here and then the photo credit i have it so that it pulls all my photo credit from lower in the metadata and in the event name i have it so that i made a column where i separated all the person's first and last name so uh in the event where it says a sequence four that's the person's first name underscore the person's last name all of that's automatically filled in by the spreadsheet. So also just because the way I, I like things, I put what department they are in the keywords along that was a headshot and it's in house and person shown because people like uh, photo shelter use person shown for their AI uh, recognition. I go ahead and put it in there just in case photo, we use photo shelter or anybody else does that that, that can be in there. Uh, all of the other information is stuff that you can fill out on your own, but that's just, I wanted to explain how this works. I have included in this, uh, in my downloads, I've included an XMP file that has all of this stuff in here. So you can automatically, you can download that file, go down to the bottom of the, the, uh, IPTC file or window and click load and load all of this in there on your own. You don't have to type any of it in. Uh, the weird thing you will have to do is go back and change your name and university and your city and that kind of stuff. And then afterwards you go down to the bottom left and there's a, a little lightning bolt and you can save everything. So from then on, it's just a little drop down. Whenever you want to do headshots, you just go click on that. It'll pull everything up and you're just ready to go. And there's a lot of this that, is exactly that. I just have it ready to go. So um, it's extremely quick. So basically, Stephen, what you're telling us there is you did all the hard work for us. Exactly. I, I, this whole spiel is just so that you can understand the back end if you wanted to fix it or you wanted to know why it's doing it. In reality, like I said, all the hard work's done. You hit some buttons and bam, bam, bam. As long as you keep everything in order, it's done. Uh, and and with that, we're fixing to come up on one of the major parts of this. Um, underneath the rename the files, I have it so that it renames everything with the year, month, day, and the event, which I mentioned in the ITPC file, uh, that's where the person's first and last name is. It pulls from there. The This part of the photo mechanic pulls their name and puts it in the file. What you must do for this to work the sequence has to be set on one, not zero one, not zero zero one, but one, because that is how, that is the number in the sequence that the spreadsheet is started in and that's how it reads it. So once you have done all of this, um, and I, so I have this in the long fill out form. One thing that you can also do, I have another uh, quick thing that I have in that download folder is I have a snapshot of what this page looks like of the ingest. So if you go down to, especially if you're on Mac, you go down to the bottom left of their little lightning bolt again, hit manage snapshots, whoops, manage snapshots, and you go find the folder that, or the file that says headshot locked ingest.snap, and you load it in there, it will automatically load all this stuff in there for you. So you just have to make sure you still have to do the IPTC and you still have to make sure it's set to one, but all the everything else is, is done for you. So after that, you'll do ingest and it will, it if once you have your stuff set right, it will automatically pull in all the headshots. And uh, I have it so that, 
I don't know that I have it on here. Yes, open contact sheet. It will pull up all the headshots and everybody's files will be, uh, will be renamed um, and metadata all included. I did not put a slide in here for that, but I'm gonna show that to you here in a second. After I'm finished, um, I go through and then Photomacake has an email, um, has an email uh, factor that you can do to it. So I tone the pictures, I'll save them, and then I'll select them all and I will go hit Command Shift E and it'll pull up this email dialog. I'll say send it to people at 2000 pixels on the long side because most people are using them for the web and don't need more. And I don't want to send, clog up my email by sending out full res files. I'll tell it to put it, convert it to sRGB and just use the JPEG. Uh, down here in the email part, it says A uh, sequence two. That is their email address. It will automatically fill that in. And then again, a form letter for hi, their first name. Here's your headshot. Let us know if you need anything else. Uh, once again, this has a sequence also. So down at the bottom where it says sequence uh, or set sequence, you need to click on that and put that again to one because that will uh, reset, the, make sure everybody's in the right order. The other thing I did not mention, I think I do, when you select all your files, make sure that you have them in capture time because when you put them in, if you have it by um file name, everybody's name has changed and it may switch them around. So keep people in, in capture time. So I, the other thing I do is right above the sequence is create a separate email for each photo and review the email before sending it out. Because there's sometimes I'm going 90 to nothing and as quick as it is, I may forget to rehit the sequence. And it like sends emails to the wrong people or whatever. So I always go through and double check that. And I'll show you that in, as I do it. So, and then, yeah, you're done. Then you just back your stuff up and, and you head out. Once again, here is a, uh, if you want to screenshot this or write that down, this is the, uh, the code to get to my file. And now I, <laughs> I'll let you do that, and I'm going to get in here, and I will show you, let's pull this over, find out where my mouse is on my screen. So, yes. I'm just blown away because I had no idea that you could send emails via photo mechanic. Like, that's that's pretty awesome. You can you can use that for any time. You you have a, a, a contact sheet up. You can select a file and then just email it out at whatever size you want. And that I, I talked to one person. My raw files are close enough. In reality, if I don't want to do any retouching, I don't even have to tone them. I could just pick the raw files and say email all these out at two thousand pixel JPEG, and it would do that for you. So. Yeah, that's awesome. For you shooter, the shooters that are a lot better than me, that bet your exposure, you can you can just start emailing stuff out as is and then get back to it later. So here's what I'll do. I've I've got a card in from a shoot. I shot some coworkers yesterday. So I'm pulling up the ingest file. I'm gonna go down here. I have my lightning bolt at the bottom. Can you see my is my screen still showing, Nate? Yeah, you're good. Okay, I went to the lightning bolt at the bottom and I just did my everything that I said. It brings up ignore all everything else, put everything in the same folder, year, month, date, studio headshots with another folder called raw. I'm going to tell it to put it on my desktop just so that y'all can see that. I do need to make sure I can, I'm con, uh, selecting my, my card. It's copying only Lorock files. I go in here. Okay, wow. So I have my metadata set to my basic metadata that I go into to, um, for normal shoots. I'm going to go down to here and I'm picking where I had saved my typical uh, ITPC for headshots that, as I said, fills out the name, department, faculty or staff, and same thing, first and last name, yeah. everything else. Oh, okay. uh, I'll close that. I'll go right here. I'll hit sequence. I'm going to turn that to one. 
I will hit ingest and this should work. Bam, there is just a set of headshots. Everybody I did. Like I said, on my spreadsheet from yesterday, I put two names in because I had one person go twice. Now I go through and um, I would tone these. And then so I'm just going to go ahead from there and select them all because they're test try to make it quick also whenever I shoot uh, all my folders have a raw file and they have an export folder that are all named the same as what the original is so I can keep them in order I export them there save Okay, now I can go into my desktop folder and can go into here. If these were my tone folders, I would hit, I would select them all, make sure they're in capture time. I would do shift Apple E. It will bring up my send as an email. I said, put it at 2000 pixels, the name, all that is going to stay standard. And you can also save these settings right down here like you can everywhere else. Reset it to one, and hopefully that will all pull up in the right window. There. Now I'll look, and I'll say, okay, this last person's name was, uh, let me pull that over, is Amanda. By the way, Amanda from Psychology, she's a type headshot taken in communication studio just as I mentioned um, but I'll look and say okay Amanda right there Amanda right here and this is Amanda all of these match the last ones match they're on sequential order and I'll just go through and hit send and then I will send all however many headshots I have every once in a while our uh, outlook has a problem with attaching a photo like this right here and I'll just look and say, okay, that was um, Jeff. So I'll go here to Jeff and then I'll do a save, uh, command S, and then I will save a 2000 pixel picture to my desktop. Then I'll just attach it and send it out. And again, that's just, I've, it doesn't happen with Apple Mail. I've not tried some others, but it, talking to other people that use it, this seems to be just a flaw with Outlook. So yeah, but then you're, and this point you're done and you're headed out the door and people are surprised that you just shot their headshots that morning and you got them back before noon. So Stephen, I, going back to my other question about having that daily log as opposed to a monthly or yearly, is this one of the reasons why you have that log per day because it will coincide with the headshots for that day? And it's just, okay, that makes a lot more sense now seeing it. Great. Is there any questions? I know this stuff is really boring, but I, I promise you it's it will it has changed my life and it, you may not implement it totally, but it can do the same thing for you. I know others it has. I have a question that's a little bit off subject. I noticed one of your portraits was photographed horizontally. Do you normally do that? No. That was a special that, request. That that was a staff member. Um, I actually, when I started, I wanted to shoot them horizontally. Um, and I shot a few and my supervisor came to me and was like, no, we got to have them all vertical. I'm like, well, you can crop a vertical out of it. And, and uh, the response I received was that, um, well, not all of our campus partners are smart enough to crop a vertical out of it. So, and our formats are vertical, so we need them vertical. Um, again, these were all just coworkers that I said, hey, I got a presentation. Can y'all hop in the studio for me tomorrow? So um, it is how I shoot, but it was just a quick, I didn't want to use random people's camp pictures on campus without them knowing for this presentation. 
Great. Hey, do you guys have any other questions? I know that was a lot of information. And for me, I need to go back and digest that in small pieces. Uh, let's see. So Jeff, and with, with that being said, anybody that has any questions on this or anything else, feel free to contact me. I'm always an open book. I will I will put the time down because it, it's like Nate said, this is a lot to process. Uh, we'll set, I can sit down and go through it one-on-one. -on -one. I recommend testing it on coworkers before you just automatically go and do it just to make sure you have your, your stuff down. But, uh, yeah, it, it's super simple and it, it's life changing once you get used to it. So Jeff has a question about, he said he has a similar workflow tethered shooting into Lightroom. And he has a question if photo mechanic does tethered shooting and if not, why don't you do tethered shooting? Um, I did tether shooting and, um, the screen was a lot bigger and it scared people when they saw their face that big. Um, I do like that when I did tether shooting that you could go ahead and apply your settings so that it would come through. Um, but it also slowed things down a little bit better, a little bit more. I found by plugging into a, I just have an old commute, computer monitor that we pulled out of a screen, out of a, not screen, but out of a uh, closet. You can use an HDMI cord. And when you plug into it, it just turns the back of your camera, the monitor into the back of your camera. And it moves a lot faster than having to wait on uh, Lightroom. And I can tag and do all this stuff in camera. I know that the folks at Auburn, they have adopted this. They shoot tethered into Lightroom, and then they use the spreadsheet to apply the metadata after, excuse me, has already been in Lightroom and processed. I personally like all my metadata and my raw files and my JPEGs and everything to follow through, so therefore I decided to stay with this, this factor. Oh, great, great. Any other questions you guys have? And you can go ahead and chime in instead of worrying about typing. I'm guessing you're using this code replacement for more than just headshots. Like you've got to use this for all kinds of sporting events and all that type of stuff, right? Um, believe it or not, we have an athletics uh, department. They shoot our sports. I go shoot some of it, but that's not right. my job. So I don't have to worry about that. But what I do have for my code replacements, I have what I call my, it's, if you may have saw it in there, it says peeps. It's all my VIPs on campus. So I have my chancellor, my president. I have all the vice chancellors as VC and their initials. I have all of our deans and it's D and then the initials of the school. I have all people that show up regularly that have really hard names and long titles uh, so that I can, as I'm going through and trying to type all this in, I can try to be as efficient as possible. It, it is, um, let me see, I can even, I can pull one of those up. Um, I can show you what I have, but it, it makes the different, all the difference in the world. Um, so I'll screen share again and I'll just put it on this one so I don't lose anything. So yes, I told you I have my code replacement right here, right here's my peeps. And there is all of my code replacement for people I have. And I even have stuff for like C date so that, and uh, the credit for the photographer uh, at the bottom and different things that I've used over and over in here. Now, granted, as faculty change, you need to change it, but it still makes it a whole lot better to remember hey, who's the dean of the business college right now, or who's the dean of the law school? And with deans, I do not put their initials in it. I just keep the college names in there because if they do change out, I don't have to worry about who it is right now. Vice chancellors, I do use their initials though. Awesome. Anybody else? All right, well, Stephen, thank you very much. That was, that was awesome. Um, for me, again, I know that that will be something I'll have to go back and digest. There's a lot of information there, but it looks like a very smooth 
efficient process once we invest the time to get it set up. And even if there's little pieces, I think there's some really, really good takeaways that we can use to incorporate into our workflow to make it just a little bit more efficient. So thank you so much for doing that, for putting in that groundwork and for being willing to, to share that with all of us. Um, again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to Stephen and uh, I know he's happy to, to answer them. So thanks again. Uh, thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen. That was awesome. Yeah, well done. How long did that uh, take you to set up? The process or? Yeah, the process and then like troubleshooting, making sure, I guess it would have been a good question to ask during, like to, to make it all work and to be well oiled. So working, working out all the kinks. It, it, it's been all the way until this summer since 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, like I just found out what I was doing is I was, uh, because Canon has stars, I would go through and I still sort of do this now as I'm trying for them to decide, I will say, Hey, well, I'll put a one star if you think you like it and then we'll delete everything out in between. And I only keep three stars. So yeah. I would open up everything in photo mechanic and I would just show my three stars and then save them and import the metadata. And then I was talking to photo mechanic and trying to figure out how I could do that with stars and like, well, we only do lock files. So, and then I saw where it could import the lock files. So I was like, well, let me just do that part. Let me have them. Uh, I can lock them even though they have three stars. So I started locking them and that's made it just so much faster. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. The, um, and I don't, like I said, I think I told you earlier, um, everything I have, my studio set up is all the same. It all stays. People's skin complexions are a little different. But mm, sure. I have everything uh, calibrated for that setup. So in reality, I could just send from the raw files if I wanted to. But, you know, you don't get that straight hair photoshopped off that's crazy or whatever if you do that. So I still go through. It takes me. I apply the setting and make tweaks and I can have those done. That's the longest part of what I do. And it takes me like 10 minutes. Yeah. So do you have like a portrait preset that you've created? Great. I do Lightroom. Yeah, that, that's something that we did recently was we made a preset for, specifically for men and for women. And that's like, OK, apply that preset. And then if you need to do general tweaking from there, like if their skin's really red, you know, then kind of shifting those colors a little bit. But overall, that preset's been really helpful for that consistency, too. The, it, the consistency is exact. I mean, that's what um doing all this stuff and having it there so that it's just bam you don't have to think about it you know it's going to be exactly like it was before close to it. it that that speeds everything up yeah great awesome well, again thank you